In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given great and precious promises to those who believe. Grant us the perfect faith, which overcomes all doubts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from Jeremiah. The 15th chapter, verses 15 to 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me, all my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them. Your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 26, verses 1 to 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have halted the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. 
Our second reading this morning is from St. Paul's letter to the church at Rome, the 12th chapter, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the reading of the gospel and the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to You, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Him aside and began to rebuke Him, saying, Far be it from You, Lord! This shall never happen to You. But He turned and said to Peter, Get behind Me, Satan. You are a hindrance to Me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits its soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with His angels in glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what He has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this 13th Sunday after the Pentecost, 2020, the word comes to us from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter, verses 21 to 28. What is biblical discipleship? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, I was away last couple of Sundays. I was away last Sunday. Thank you for the time off. Uh, Really, I feel refreshed. On on, uh, Thursday, I told everyone, uh, because I had been away for a while, I may go really long in the sermon today. I just have a lot to say. Uh, I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. So last week, um, our lectionary, the assigned readings of the church, had Jesus giving to us the office of the keys. Well, what's the office of the keys? Well, let me repeat what Jesus said to us last week. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, our Lord Christ is giving authority to His church to forgive sins in His name. And also, He is giving authority to His church to withhold forgiveness from those who do not repent. Those who are living in deliberate sin. Forgiveness, absolution, the Lord's Supper is to be withheld but for those who come 
and who are sorry for the sins. Who do not wish to live in that way anymore. There is forgiveness to be had. And our Lord Christ gives this to the church. The keys to the church. Well, how does that sound? What does that look like? You just heard it a few moments ago. At the beginning of the divine service, our Lord Christ sends men out to deliver holy absolution as a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have that as a congregation. We have that as we gather together. But we also have individual confession and absolution where the keys are also used. And in individual confession and absolution, the penitent, the person sorry for their sins, comes and kneels and the pastor lays his hands upon their head and says, I, a called and ordained servant of the Word, and by the authority of my Lord Jesus Christ, declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. As an individual. What's the basis for doing this in the church? Jesus tells us this morning where that comes from. St. Matthew records it this way. Jesus began to show His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem. That He must suffer at the hands of the scribes and and the, the Pharisees and the chief priests and the elders and be killed and on the third day raised. Jesus gives us this. He gives it to His disciples. What's going to happen? In fact, He does it three times in St. Matthew's Gospel. Again, again, and again, He tells His disciples, I will go to Jerusalem. Take the cross. And then rise. Here you have the ground and basis for holy absolution, for the office of the keys, the passion, the suffering, the death, the glorious and victorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus on Easter Sunday. This is everything that we're about. This is the entire grounding and basis for what we do as a church. Most especially for the office of the keys for holy absolution. Because if Jesus does not go to the cross, if He doesn't go to Jerusalem and suffer at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, if He doesn't go to the cross to take your place and make atonement for your sins, then you're not forgiven. And you're still bearing those sins. If Jesus does not physically rise from the dead on Easter Sunday, then what are we even doing here this morning? Because death has all of our numbers then, right? Now, some will argue that none of that really matters. And that to be a disciple of Jesus is to be about choosing one's own sort of spirituality or, or course or way uh, or some righteous cause. If I do this, then God will be generous to me. If I put the right sign in my yard, then I'll be considered a righteous person by society. If I put a little bit more effort into my prayer life or, or my, my faith, then, then, then I'll be good with God. We see this self-chosen type of spirituality with St. Peter this morning. St. Peter's a great hero of mine. He's impetuous. I count myself as impetuous. As our Lord Christ tells him about what is to come, Jerusalem, and his resurrection, what does St. Peter do? No, Jesus. You can't do that. That's, that's not what's going to happen. Not for you. Remember, just before this, Jesus, or just before this, Peter had confessed that Jesus is the Messiah, the, the Son of the living God. He had confessed Him as the Christ. Peter believes that he can save Jesus from the splintered cross, from death, that he's got it, that, that Peter can take care of it. 
Far be it from you, Lord. That's, that's not going to happen to you. If you recall at the beginning of St. Matthew's Gospel, Jesus goes into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Jesus knows His voice. He had heard Him there in the wilderness. So when Peter seeks to obstruct our Lord Jesus' way to the cross and to the empty tomb, Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. He had heard that voice before. He knew it. Get behind me, Satan, he says to Peter. Peter could not see in that moment what the ground and basis of his salvation and our salvation was to be. He couldn't figure out what was happening there as Jesus was instructing them. He could only see through the eyes of the world that physical death, while a reality here in our life, that's not how it's supposed to be. That sin and death are foreign to this world. And that eternal life is what our Lord Jesus has intended for us. From the start of creation. So, Jesus tells Peter to get behind him. And one of the things that we recognize from the teachings of our Lord Jesus and by what he's saying about going to Jerusalem and to the empty cross to, or to the empty tomb and to his resurrection, what he is saying to us is that the only thing that you can bring to God to bring God's favor upon you is your sin. Bring your sin to God. And in Jesus Christ, it's forgiven. What are we to do about our salvation? Nothing. Just sit there and listen. On account of Jesus, crucified under Pontius Pilate and raised on the third day in accordance with Scriptures, I, a called ordained minister of the Church of Christ, declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of Jesus. Not just some sins, but all of them. They were nailed to the cross and have been taken into the flesh of Jesus and they're gone. This was given to you at your baptism. This was given to you at the holy absolution at the beginning of this service. It's given to you now in the sermon from the pulpit. It's given to you in a few moments at the Lord's Supper. What is biblical discipleship? It is to be killed by the law, driven to one's knees in repentance, and then raised to new and everlasting life in Christ. It is death and resurrection in Jesus. What is biblical discipleship? It is letting God be God. And that in Jesus Christ, your entire salvation has been accomplished. And it's yours. And we trust that as Christians. We have confidence in that. Again and again, the disciple of Jesus holds fast to this word of promise given at baptism and in the absolution, in the sermon, and in the Lord's Supper. This then means that as Christians, we confess Jesus as Lord from our mouth. And that he is upon our lips and our hearts and our minds. Jesus warns us then at the end of this passage that those who try to put their words into Jesus' mouth will suffer wrath. And those who have Jesus' word and his holy name upon their mouth will live and no salvation. Biblical discipleship means to have died and have been raised every day to a new and different way, the way of Jesus, who leads us always by word of promise that never ceases or fails. And so as Christians, we hold fast to that promise. May it ever be upon our ears, in our hearts, and upon our minds, and our lips. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.
redeemed not with gold or silver, but with the holy precious blood of Christ. Together let us confess the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Knowing the will of God, that all will come to the knowledge of your Son and find salvation in Christ. Let us pray on behalf of our parish and for all people according to their needs. For our faith and faithfulness, especially those persecuted for the cause of Christ, and for our strength in time of trial, and for us to persevere in grace in the day of trouble, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, our governor, and all legislators and civil servants, for those who must render judgment and impose punishment upon lawbreakers, and those who work for peace among the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the church, our mother in Christ, until Christ is fully formed in us, for the pastors, that they may be faithful stewards of God's mysteries. For those at home and abroad who bring a message of salvation to those who have not heard, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to take up the cross and follow the Lord wherever he leads. For compassion in the face of challenge and adversity. For compassion and harmony in our life together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For holy lives of faith. For faith to receive the Lord's gift of his flesh and blood in the Holy Sacrament. For this holy assembly, that we may present ourselves in the living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. For those who have asked for our prayers, Steve Drew, Betty Alexander, Connie Disley, Jeff Donahue, Jerry Fleischman, Diane Morris. Family and friends of Shirley Wegner, family and friends of Lorraine Lyson, and for all those who are on our hearts this morning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for our students, teachers, administrators, for safety in the year ahead. For learning, for growth, for all of our students, our community, and our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have forgiven our sins and delivered us from death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to pour out your mercy upon us and grant to us all good things needful to this body and life. And keep from us all things harmful. From you, through you, and to you are all things. O Lord, Holy Father, and mighty God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom with the Holy Spirit you are one Lord, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Dear Christians, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things for strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation 
which you have prepared in the sight of every nation, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Dear Christians, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.